Okay, today's video is about the nine mark command word questions. The assess, to what extent, evaluate and justify questions. When you're doing the GCSE exams, you must make sure you read the questions carefully and I strongly advise you to bug the question. We know that the exam boards like to ask some tricky words every now and then, so you want to box the command word, whether it's evaluate, explain, give, so you're clear on what you're being asked to do, and then underline all of the key words, whether that is the social, the economic effect, the impact that you're being asked to look at, or whether it's just a tectonic hazard versus a tropical storm. And then go back over to check you've understood and try and work out those words you're unsure of. But the particular focus today is the nine mark questions. Each exam will have two nine mark questions. Okay? And one of those will have three marks for spelling, punctuation, and grammar here. So that's 21 marks in total, which can range from something just over 22% of the paper to more than that in paper three. So really, these two questions are going to decide maybe two or three grade boundaries for you because the percentages are so close together. Okay? If you're at the high end of that, you get the full marks, you could potentially get 20% more marks and that could be three or four grade boundaries if they're tight together, probably close to two or three. So we must nail these two questions. In the physical exam, you'll have one nine marker at the end of section one, the natural hazards section. Now recently that's been about tropical storms, okay? But it could also be about hip versus lick tectonic hazards, the case studies that you've looked at there. The second nine mark question is in the ecosystems, and that's usually your choice between hot deserts or cold environments, and then they ask you some questions on that. It's cold environments, it's usually opportunity and challenges, or it's about managing cold environments and the sustainability of that. How do you manage those? Okay, why should you manage those and evaluate that? There's no nine marker in section three and four. In the human paper, the section one has a nine marker. Now that could be on the challenges and opportunities of one of the cities that you've studied, whether that's uh, Rio de Janeiro in some cases, or whether that's Bristol in the UK. Um, or it could be about sustainable urban areas, how to make them more sustainable. In section two, the development section, you'll have nine marker, but really it's unclear. There's no real pattern on what this could be on. It seems maybe the UK environment, we've seen that we've sort of studied a lot about the UK economy, but it could be about your knee um, case study, the country that's in need. It could be about some development. So it's a real tricky one here, but we know that section two has a huge amount of content in it compared to some of the other sections. So it's quite a tricky one for you to say, focus on this or focus on that. Paper three, you'll have one nine marker on the pre-release topic that you're given. Okay, Usually that will be a should or shouldn't this go ahead or to what extent do you agree? Or, but essentially you'll have to pick a side or in this case. Sorry. Okay, and then you have to argue still both ways. And then the second one, is, uh, number two nine mark question on this, is usually an evaluate your fieldwork or suggest how you would do that fieldwork differently. So that's the structure of the uh, where you'll see them in the papers. Okay? But again, really important, these questions, because they're worth so many marks on the percentage wise. So how do we answer these questions? Well, that's a really key thing, too, because if we answer these using the wrong command word, or thinking that saying maybe explain, we will not get more than maybe four marks out of the nine, maybe only three. Okay? The typical nine mark questions are assess, to what extent, justify, maybe discuss. Okay? But these questions here, these command words, are asking you to essentially not just explain something, but evaluate okay? that higher level skill, that AO4 skill. Okay? And now, how does that look in actual practicality? Essentially, it's asking you to weigh up or compare something okay? and then make an informed decision. So what we've come up with is a scaffold to help you plan these answers. So every nine mark question, which has this assess, to what extent, justify, evaluate, you could use this scaffold to write your answer. Okay. So we're going to run through that scaffold now, and I want you to spend a bit of time going over it, maybe practice some other questions, writing a plan with this scaffold. So let's look at, maybe it's assess or to what extent. Assess the extent to which an urban regeneration scheme you have studied worked well. Nine marks. Okay? So it's the assess the extent, not explain, 
Okay, so I'm not asking you just to say because of this leads to, I want you to assess. Assess, look at both sides and compare. What am I assessing when I box that command word? I'm assessing underlying an urban regeneration scheme. Okay, I've studied, I'm assessing had it worked well. Has it worked well? Okay. Now, the first thing you need to do is name the scheme. Before you assess it, you actually need to name it and maybe describe it. Okay. So I have studied this urban regeneration scheme. Maybe locate it would be a good idea, especially if you want to get into the level three answers, the seven, eight, nine. Then you need to say, on the one hand, okay, why the scheme works. On the one hand, I've studied this and it worked well because of X, Y, Z, whatever it is, one, two, three. And then you need to look at the other side. Okay, say so on the other side, it didn't work so well. There were these problems with it. What you've done there is you've assessed the good and bad, and that's really the key skill in these questions. Not just explaining them, but looking at it. Okay. To get the very highest marks with these in a nine mark question, what you could also do is then compare it to another scheme. Okay. So maybe another regeneration scheme if you've studied one, or another um, way of doing something if you've studied it. And you can say this is better than that, or this is worse than that, and back that up with a point. So you do. I've said the scheme, it worked well because of this. On the other hand, there were these problems with it. Compared to this other scheme, it worked better or worse because of. Okay. And then you finish it off with a conclusion. Looking at both sides, I conclude that the scheme works, didn't work, work quite well. Actually answer the question. The conclusion must link back to that question to answer it. Now you can see here in the plan, I've got these five steps. Name the scheme, locate it there. On the one hand, the good things, on the other hand, the bad things, and then the comparison. Now, how many points should you make for a nine mark question is always a bit tricky to work out. I would say maximum four points need to be made. They don't have to be equal weighting, they don't have to be equal on the one hand, these are good, equal on the other hand, bad, but we need at least both sides. So it could be three on one side and one on the other. For a six mark question, I wouldn't suggest you compare to anything else you don't need to. You may not even need to on a nine mark to get the highest mark. We do have one, I might compare it to another scheme if you can. And then make sure you link back your conclusion, actually answer the question, assess the extent, well, I think it worked well, very well. Link it back in. So do not forget to do that link back in. That's the scaffold. Okay, it's quite a simple one, but it's very important that you learn this. I'm going to go through an example now with that. So to what extent it's the same basically as the assess. We want you to value the importance, how true it is of a statement. Okay. So here's our exam question. To what extent did an urban regeneration scheme you have studied work well? Okay. It's like the assess, look at both sides and compare. So I have studied Bristol Temple Meads Cor Temple Quarter Regeneration. Okay. I've stated what I've actually studied. Okay, first things first, state your case study, state what you've studied. If you can't remember a specific one, try and bring in an example, or oh, this place must have done one. You can locate that, maybe add a fact about it if you have one here. On the one hand, the scheme worked well because it created 18 businesses in the M shed. That created a lot of economic benefits. Now I'm bringing in some key terms to make sure I'm in the level three answer. Okay. You could expand that, maybe mention one of the businesses there. On the, uh, secondly, the paintworks area holds a lot of cultural events. Okay, this is a social benefit for the area, whether it's plays, shows, and that's a benefit too, the regeneration, it's improved the area this way. Three, there's new infrastructure like Brock Bridge. Okay, this has improved and attract people into the area so that again it's improved. Now here I'm stating, I'm not fully explaining these, but you should be. This is just a plan. You should be explaining these. The new jobs has addressed an economic problem. The paint works has addressed a social problem. The infrastructure has improved the transport, which was a problem before. Now I put in four here. There's the low energy. You don't need those four, so I can cut this out. But I do need to say the other side, the other point of view. But on the other point of view, the 16,000 people arena has been delayed. And they don't know if the infrastructure will manage that many people. So the actual regeneration project hasn't been a success because of that delay. Okay. 
I could then, if I was really trying to show off and show detailed knowledge, compare it to maybe Stokes Croft regeneration. And I'm saying it's worked better, not worse, I think it's better, because there is still a lot of crime in Stokes Croft and unemployment, but there is less now in the Temple Quarter. So I've linked it back into the improvement regeneration, how it will be good. Okay. Whereas Stokes Croft hadn't had that. Finally, my conclusion. So looking at both sides, I conclude that the Temple Quarter Urban Regeneration Scheme has worked very well from an economic and environmental viewpoint and quite well from a social viewpoint. I'm linking it back to the actual wording of the question. Have I answered the question? It's asked me, has it worked well? Yes, I'm saying that. But I've looked at it from both sides. I've got my reason here. You could, if you really wanted to, maybe make a suggestion here in the conclusion about how they could improve it. To improve it, I would suggest this. But that is really going for the 9 out of 9 mark answer. Okay. So most of the time, to get that 7 out of 7, you locate your case study. You say on the one hand, the good things, okay, on the other hand, the bad things, and if you can, put a comparison in, and then we answer that question, the conclusion, linking it back. That should get you at least the 6 marks, and then if with the detailed knowledge, maybe some specific things like the 18 businesses at the end of naming the place, Naming places like Brock Bridge, the capital, obviously, okay, that's going to get you into that detailed knowledge and that's going to get you the eight, nine marks. So that is your structure. Now, remember, justify is the same as these, okay, but with justify, you should say at the start which side you think, but you still have to argue both sides. The only thing with justify, you don't need this comparison. You're just saying, I think it has worked because of these reasons. On the other hand, there are these problems, but overall my conclusion is don't worry about comparison with a justified question. But essentially, assess to what extent, justify, evaluate are the same. I want to see that introduction, what you're talking about. I want to see the, on the one hand, one side of viewpoint. On the other hand, I want to see the other side or viewpoint. If you can, compare it to something else, saying it's better or worse, with a reason. Okay, and then I want that conclusion added at the end. You do that structure in the exam, you are definitely going to get yourself up there in the at least clear knowledge, hopefully detailed knowledge, if you can bring in some case study facts and information too. Okay. Now remember, these are in every paper. You're going to have one at the end of section one, one at the end of section two, and pretty much both papers. They are going to add up to a lot of marks. So practice this now. Find a nine mark question. Have a go at writing the plan for it.